enterprises heavily depend on search and observability, but too often the tools are costly, rigid, or slow to keep up with innovations like AI. Open search software is taking a totally different path. It's open source, it's community driven, and now it's AI powered. With its 3.2 release, the project introduces agentic AI capabilities like agentic search and agentic memory, which are built to make data systems even more adoptive and context aware. In this episode of The Source, we have with us Carl Meadows, Chair of Governing Board at Open Source Foundation, to explore what this means for developers and enterprises. Carl, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Open Source Software Foundation just hit the one year mark under the Linux Foundation. Talk about some of the major milestones you are most excited about. Thanks for asking. Yes, I've been thrilled since, you know, when we set out a year ago and uh, Open Search transitioned to the Linux Foundation, you know, we hoped that moving it into this neutral governance would and make it easier for many more contributors to actively participate in the project. And that's exactly what's happened. We've seen a very large growth in contributions and um, from both big and small companies. And really excited to see the open search community expand the way it has. That's what I expected when we move things under you know an open neutral uh, umbrella like Linux Foundation. Mm -hmm. Now, with this 3.2 release, you folks have introduced experimental agentic AI capabilities, including agentic search and agentic memory. Can you explain what these capabilities bring to the platform? Uh, yes, I'm really excited. If you think about like agentic memory, this can greatly enhance the quality of experience with agents as well as simplify a platform. Because by being able to not just store context, but also learn from that context within open search, it really reduces the complexity. I don't have to go build a whole nother like application that's managing the memory and managing these sessions and the conversations. It's all right there. So when the agent's interacting, uh, it's not having to page in and out a lot of data. It's not having, you know, I don't have to have a separate backend that's doing the memory. I can just store it alongside the rest of uh, the search infrastructure to make it both simple and powerful for for end users that are building these types of experiences for their customers. Have you seen any early use cases where the AI power capabilities in 3.2 are already making an impact or it's too early to talk about those? Uh, a little early for 3.2, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, I have been consistently excited to see the types of experiences that uh, developers are building on top of open search. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, there's been a lot of really interesting use cases that have been published. Um, one I'll mention that uh, this one uh, Adobe talked about at, at the last Open Search Con. Uh, like you may not know that uh, uh, Acrobat AI Assistant is actually backed by Open Search. So when I'm in Acrobat and I want to ask questions of my document, what's what actually happens in real time, it's going to take and go build embeddings for that document. And uh, the agent is going to then be interacting with open search to start answering questions all within a few seconds of you initiating that conversation. Um, so the fact that you can do that in real time so quickly and transparently to the end customer they, that uh, they can just start naturally communicating with the agent that's uh, assistant that's asking questions. And then it just sets the time to live on it so that they're not you know, keeping trillions of documents in the Adobe backend. They'll just get rid of it when the session's over after some time so that um, they can uh, be effective and you know, safe space. Is there any use case that even you are excited about? Oh, I'm excited about all of them. I get to your, uh, your right to the point of view is like we hear about these when uh, folks go out and talk about it, when they write a blog or when they, you know, go to our open search con and do presentations. Um, uh, so, yeah, so I'm very excited to see the number of uh, companies that are really using open search as a primary backend for a lot of their Gen AI applications because, you know, these applications tend to be unstructured in nature, and open search is really good with unstructured data. So both 
vector data as well as just general search data. And then oftentimes the real uh, uh, best quality results come when you actually combine those two things together in one place because the, uh, you know, when you have non-ambiguous questions, like if I have a non-ambiguous question, like, uh, like help me find Air Jordans, I don't actually need to go ask an LLM what they meant. Like the, there's the standard search response is actually excellent for that. But when I have a much more ambiguous question, then having a, you know, a rich language model interpret that question for me, um, uh, will give me much more magical results. So having both of these things in one system so that, uh, I don't have to stitch together multiple things in order to get high, highly relevant results back to my end customers. I think it's really powerful. And having all of that in an open source platform that anybody can build on is, a, you know, I think a, a really compelling use case. Now let's talk about some of the pain points that teams face. How do these new features change the way enterprises can approach search, observability, and analytics, which they could not have done earlier? Yeah, I think the world is, there's just get more and more data. And that's true for both search, that's true for unstructured data, but it's also true for analytical use cases, like you mentioned, observability and security. Just the, the amount of data is growing and that this data has value hidden in it. But the, one of the challenges we face is in order to get like real time, rich analytical access to this data, it can be really expensive. And so, because I'm loading all of this into a, an engine that's processing these queries. So, you know, one of the things we've really been focused on is like, how do we scale this system, both pro performance and cost to meet the needs of the world as, you know, as these systems grow. And so I was really impressed with both what we've done in the 2.x branch and where we're going with the 3.x branch to really bend the curve and improve, radically improve the efficiency of the engine so that you know you can handle you know thousands of queries per second and support in consumer facing applications which may be very demanding for the number of uh, the searches that they want and the latency that they need those searches performed at to support provide a great experience for their end users so fo focusing on performance, focusing on cost and efficiency, like no data engine went wrong if it ever made things faster or cheaper. So um, really excited to see, uh, see that. Um, we achieved almost a 10x improvement over the 2x, uh, the 2.x you know, releases of OpenSearch when you look across the aggregate benchmarks that uh, we release. and. Um, I think the team's really just getting started. Of course, uh, I have been covering open source since the day one of my journey. I love open source, but we live in a heterogeneous environment, a lot of proprietary, a lot of open source. For organizations evaluating options, what differentiates open source from proprietary search and analytic platforms? And in such a crowded AI and analytics space, what makes open search stand out of course, in addition to being open source. The quality, scale, reliability of the software, I, I think is really incredible. Now, you know, aside from my role as the you know chair of the Open Search Software Foundation, you know, I also work at AWS. I'm a director of product at AWS. You know, we run very large businesses on top of Amazon Open Search Service, and some of the largest workloads at Amazon are backed by Open Search. And as you can imagine, a large workload at Amazon's a large workload anywhere. <laughs> so um, as an open source platform uh, and you build on open search, you know that it's uh, something that's reliable and uh, can scale and will be able to support my business as it grows. So it's something that I should feel comfortable betting on because thousands of companies all over the world, tens of thousands of companies over all the world have uh, bet on open search. Um, and so I don't think there's any compromise in quality or uh, availability when you, you know, pick open search as a, as a building block for the applications that you're, just, you're designing for your customers. What else is exciting from your perspective? I'm really excited to see uh, us be able to uh, mature the uh, 
pipe processing language, which is a uh, language that's particularly useful when you're doing like observability or security analytics, where you're doing iterative discovery of data. So as a human, and I'm trying to interact with my data and discover my data, the pipe processing language is really intuitive because I can progressively learn more about my data by extending my query with the pipes. Um, that pipe processing language uh, you know, is something that I believe we started developing back around uh, 2020. I should probably check the date before I quote the date. <laughs> and, uh, um, but uh, in the last year, we've really uh, seen a lot of evolution in that. We added Apache Calcite as a query planner, which has now enabled us to really expand that syntax to be able to support much more complex joins, much more complex uh, operators to make that language something that uh, I think is a really rich experience for for people that are working with using open source to learn about and discover what's happening inside large data sets. Um, uh, by the end of the year, I think uh, we'll see PPL um, be as powerful as any type of similar language out there. What's next for open source, both on the technology roadmap and how the ecosystem continues to expand? I think a lot of the themes that you've seen from us are going to keep continuing. So continuing to improve the performance, really improve the analytical capabilities of the engine to support lower latency and higher throughput use cases that we're, we're seeing. Um, that benefits observability, it, it, it benefits uh, security. But the nice thing about being able to do like really low latency uh, analytical queries with search, so you're not having to trade off between analytics and uh, the richness of the type of results you can get, um, as well as the continued advancements on uh, the vector side. So there's, you know, that's a very fast evolving space with uh, new techniques coming all the time to improve relevancy, improve efficiency, improve cost. So, yeah, I think a lot of the themes that you're already seeing will just you know continue to march forward and get even better. Carl, thank you so much for joining us and sharing these updates. It's quite obvious that search, observability, and analytics are evolving fast. And open source is ensuring that open source plus agentic AI will give enterprises both the power, flexibility, and freedom that they crave. Thank you for joining me today, and I look forward to chatting with you again. Thank you for having me. It would be my pleasure. Thanks. And back to our audience, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching.